It is said that when a dynasty is about to fall, the earth and the sky will speak. On the morning of May 30, 1626, the sky over Beijing did not just speak. It screamed. The city was waking up. It was the Ming Dynasty, the center of the civilized world. Merchants were opening their stalls. Officials were marching toward the forbidden city. Mothers were feeding their children. And then, at approximately 9 a.m., the world ended. A roar, described in the ancient texts as the sound of a collapsing sky and a cracking earth, tore through the capital. In a single heartbeat, an area of four square kilometers was pulverized. Trees were uprooted. Houses were flattened into dust. And 20,000 people died instantly. But it was not the death toll that terrified the survivors. It was the manner of the destruction. This was not just fire and brimstone. It was something stranger. Rescuers found bodies miles away hanging from treetops. And in one of the most baffling details in recorded history, thousands of victims, both the dead and the survivors, were found completely naked. Their clothes had vanished, stripped from their bodies by a force that physics could barely explain. A 5,000-pound stone lion was thrown over the city walls like a pebble. A mushroom cloud, shaped like a lingji fungus, rose into the stratosphere. For 400 years, historians and scientists have asked the same question. What happened at the Wanggongcheng Armory? Was it a simple gunpowder accident? Was it a meteorite striking with the force of a nuclear bomb? Or was it, as the people believed, the mandate of heaven leaving the Ming Dynasty? Today we open the archives of the Forbidden City. We analyze the geology, the physics, and the politics of 1626. This is the story of the Great Tanchi Explosion. To understand the explosion we must first understand the fuse. And the fuse of this disaster was lit not by a spark, but by corruption. The year is 1626. The Ming Dynasty is old. It is tired. And it is being eaten from the inside out. On the throne sits the Tianchi Emperor. He is a young man barely in his twenties. But he has no interest in ruling. He is an introvert, obsessed with carpentry. He spends his days in the palace workshops, sawing wood and building furniture, while the empire burns. Into this power vacuum stepped a man who would become one of the most villainous figures in Chinese history, Wei Zhongxian. He was a eunuch, a servant. But through manipulation, murder, and terror, he became the Shadow Emperor. He called himself the Nine Thousand Years, a title only one step below the Emperor's Ten Thousand Years. Under Wei's rule, the Ming court became a snake pit. Spies were everywhere. Generals were executed for no reason. The treasury was emptied to build temples in Wei's honor. The people were starving. The Manchus were attacking the northern borders and the moral foundation of the empire was rotting away. In Chinese philosophy, the emperor is the son of heaven. He connects the divine and the mortal. When the emperor, or the people ruling him, lose their way the cosmic balance is broken. And in 1626, the cosmos began to show signs of breaking. The explosion did not happen without warning. According to the official history of the Ming, the month of May 1626 was filled with impossible events. The universe was giving warnings. One week before the blast, the skies over Beijing turned a sickly color. Four days before, the water in the canals turned green and purple. Three days before, strange black clouds were seen gathering over the Wanggongcheng Armory, specifically. And then, the night before the disaster, the temperature plummeted. It was late May. It should have been warm. But a sudden, bitter frost covered the city. Locals reported seeing ghost fires, strange glowing balls of light, dancing on the roof of the Dongzimen Gate. Were these just coincidences? Or were they geological precursors? Modern scientists suggest the ghost fires could have been St. Elmo's fire, a buildup of static electricity. The changing water colors could indicate gas leaking from underground fissures. But to the people of Beijing, the message was clear. The dragon is angry. Let us look at the epicenter, the Wanggong Chen. Located in the southwest corner of Beijing, this was not just a warehouse. It was the military heart of the capital. The Ming Dynasty was famous for its use of gunpowder. They had fire arrows, cannons, grenades, and muskets. And Wanggong Chen was where this volatile power was stored. 
Historical records estimate that the facility held approximately 20,000 caddies, roughly 12 tons, of black powder at any given time. Some estimates go much higher. But this wasn't modern, stable explosives. This was old-school black powder, a mixture of sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter. It is dusty. It is volatile. A single spark, a drop in humidity, or careless friction can set it off. The armory was staffed by hundreds of workers. Security was tight, but safety standards were 17th century standards. On that fateful morning, soldiers were conducting a routine inspection. Perhaps a barrel was dropped. Perhaps a spark from a tool flew into the dust. Or perhaps something came from above. May 30th, the hour of the snake, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The city is bustling. Suddenly, a noise is heard from the northeast. It sounds like thunder but the sky is clear. The noise travels, growing louder, turning into a roar that shakes the foundations of the houses. People stop in the streets. They look up. And then, Wang Gong Chang detonates. The descriptions from the time are terrifying. A beam of light rose into the sky. A mushroom-shaped cloud, like a lingji plant, stood over the city. The sun was blotted out by dust and day turned into night. The shockwave was not a simple push, it was a hammer blow. Within a radius of two kilometers, everything was atomized. The official report states, large trees were uprooted. Official residences and commoners' houses were swept away. The ground was turned into a crater. The sound was heard in Nanjing hundreds of kilometers away. The tremor was felt throughout North China. In the Forbidden City, Emperor Chanchi was having breakfast. The shockwave hit the palace. Tiles rained down from the roof. The Emperor panicked and ran to the Hall of Union. His only guard was killed by a falling tile right behind him. The Emperor hid under a table, surviving by inches. But his heir, the Crown Prince, was not so lucky. The shock of the explosion reportedly terrified the infant prince to death. A blow to the dynasty that would have consequences for decades. If this were just a large explosion, it would be a tragedy. But it is the details of the damage that make it a mystery. Let's talk about the stone lion. In Chinese architecture, large stone lions guard the gates. They weigh tons. After the explosion, a 5,000-pound stone lion was found thrown over the city walls, landing miles away. To achieve this, the force would have to be incredibly directional and upward. But the most disturbing detail, the one that appears in every account, is the nudity. The chronicles state, in the bustling streets, officials in their sedans, riders on their horses and pedestrians, all had their clothes stripped off. It wasn't that the clothes were burned away. They were gone. Reports say that thousands of garments were found floating in the wind, drifting down like rain on the western hills, miles outside the city. Survivors found themselves completely naked, unharmed but confused, standing in the rubble. One official had his ears severed, but his body was otherwise intact, and naked. This leads us to the forensic analysis. A normal chemical explosion burns. It sears. But many victims showed no signs of burns. They were dismembered or stripped or crushed but not charred. What kind of force strips the clothes off a man but leaves his skin intact? For centuries, we have tried to calculate the yield of the Wang Gongcheng explosion. Based on the damage radius, modern physicists estimate the energy release was between 10 to 20 kilotons of TNT. That is the size of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Could 12 tons of black powder do that? Theory 1. The gunpowder chain reaction skeptics argue that the records are exaggerated. But even if we assume the maximum amount of gunpowder exploded, black powder is a low explosive. It pushes, it doesn't detonate with the brisance of modern TNT. To get a Hiroshima-sized blast, you would need an impossible amount of black powder. Unless, the powder dust in the air created a fuel air explosive effect, amplifying the blast. Theory 2, the bolide meteor airburst, this is the most compelling modern theory. A meteor entering the atmosphere and exploding before it hits the ground, an airburst, behaves exactly like a nuclear bomb. The mushroom cloud? Yes. The flash of light? Yes. The roar before the hit? Yes, sonic boom. The stripping of clothes? Yes. 
A high-velocity shockwave can create a pressure difference so intense it rips fabric apart without burning the skin. This was observed in Hiroshima and in tornado victims. If a meteor exploded directly over the armory, it would have detonated the gunpowder below, creating a double event, a cosmic trigger and a terrestrial explosion. This explains the excessive damage that gunpowder alone cannot account for. Theory 3. The earthquake slash tornado some suggest a massive gas leak in an earthquake. But earthquakes don't strip clothes. Tornadoes do, but a tornado does not create a mushroom cloud or a flash of light. The evidence points to the sky. The ghost fires, the falling stars, the sound, it all suggests that something visited Beijing from the stars. Science looks for causes. History looks for consequences. Whatever the cause, meteor or mistake, the result was political collapse. The explosion was interpreted as the ultimate vote of no confidence from the heavens. The emperor was forced to issue a penitential decree, admitting his faults. Wei Zhongxin, the evil eunuch, tried to spin the narrative, but his grip on power began to slip. The people whispered that the heavens were punishing the Ming for Wei's crimes. The destruction of the armory crippled the Ming military. They lost their best cannons, their reserves of powder, and their most skilled engineers. Just 18 years later, in 1644, the peasant rebels would burn Beijing. The last Ming emperor would hang himself from a tree on a hill overlooking the forbidden city. The Wang Gongcheng explosion was the first death knell of a 300-year-old dynasty. It shattered the psychological safety of the empire. Today, the site of the Wang Gongcheng Armory is a quiet neighborhood in the Xiching district of Beijing. There is no crater, no memorial, just apartments, schools, and the hum of modern traffic. But if you dig deep enough, you find the shards. For 400 years, the mystery has remained. Was it human error? A spark in a dusty room? Or was it a cosmic coincidence? A rock traveling through space for billions of years, destined to intersect with a specific warehouse in China at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday? The Great Tianxi Explosion reminds us of how fragile our civilization is. We build walls. We stockpile weapons. We think we are safe. But all it takes is a shift in the wind, a spark in the dark, or a visitor from the sky. And everything we know can vanish in a flash of white light. The clothes may have been stripped from the victims, but the explosion also stripped the illusion of control from the empire. And in the naked silence that followed, the history of China changed forever.